Now let's turn to Psalms chapter 147. Psalms 147. Psalms chapter 147, beginning with verse 9. He giveth to the beast his food, and to the young ravens which cry. He delighteth not in the strength of the horse. God taketh no pleasure in the legs of a man. The Lord taketh pleasure in them that fear him, in those that hope in his mercy. Now let's back it up and let's look at verse 10 for just a moment. He delighteth not in the strength of a horse. You see, it doesn't impress God about all of our abilities. He's not impressed. He goes on, he taketh no pleasure in the legs of a man. God is not impressed with how strong our legs are. God's not impressed with how strong we physically are. Folks, I've been there. I've been there. I've been super duper strong. And there have been times when I've been in the hospital and I was super duper weak. And i got to tell you what, it's a long ways down from being super duper strong to super duper weak. And God is not impressed by all of our talents and our abilities. God is not impressed by how strong we are. God is not impressed by how determined we are. That doesn't impress God. You know, you look at so many talented musicians today. They have so much talent, so much ability. You look at young athletes today. They didn't, there's not one thing this young athlete can do. Not one thing this young man, especially this young man, can do to run any faster than what he's running. He was born that fast. He was just born that fast. Let me tell you something, folks. If I'd have been born that fast in 1978, I'd have been playing for the Seattle Seahawks. But my legs weren't born as fast as those other guys' legs. Now, I had a lot of other skills and talent and ability, but I just wasn't fast enough. That's why I didn't play for the Seattle Seahawks. I simply didn't have it. You know what? God's not impressed. Because all of their brain, many of them, and I'm not being critical, it's the truth. You, can, you, you know about what they say and how they behave. The majority of the brains are in their legs because there ain't no brains between their ears. And oh boy, I'm telling you something. Are their legs ever talented? Do their legs ever have intelligence? when it comes to being athletic in sport or whatever it might be. You take the geniuses of the world. God is not impressed with the wisdom of mankind. He's not impressed with it all. In fact, the wisdom of man is foolishness to God. Because the wisdom of God is foolishness to that man. That's right. Hallelujah. Verse 11, the Lord taketh pleasure in them that fear Him. In them that fear Him. In those that hope in His mercy. What does it really mean to fear God? We read that in the Bible all the time. Well, let me explain it to you, what that fear means, really means to fear God. Let me make it as simple for us as I possibly can. And that which I have already done, it basically means this. I've learned to depend upon God. That if I don't have God to depend upon, my life ain't worth a plug nickel. That if I can't depend upon God, I have no hope for the pathways of my life tomorrow. I don't know who holds tomorrow, and I don't know what tomorrow holds. But those who fear the Lord God Almighty, they know who holds tomorrow. They know who holds it. They know who holds it in His hand. And they put trust, and they depend I don't know what tomorrow holds, but I know who holds tomorrow, and I've learned to depend upon that. You see, that's what it means to fear the Lord. It's as simple as that. There's no magic wand. There's nothing you can buy or sell or dig up or look for or discover. It's as simple as that. I've come to learn in all the things that I've gone through. Do you have to go through it again, child? Do you have to go through it again? I called you five times to come back. And you know on the sixth time, I'm going to beat you. Now, it's been three beatings in a row. When you're going to learn by the barrage of the fourth, come back 
here. There's safety in that fourth come back here. But when I say the fifth come back here, you're in for a whooping. I've learned to depend upon God. I don't answer this. I don't know about you. In the last 10 years, especially in the last few years, my wife and I, especially me myself as a child of God, me myself, Daryl Stavros, me myself in my own personal walk with Jesus Christ, I look at him up in the air and I say, God, here we go again. Here I go again. Right back to feeling what I used to feel. Right back to experiencing what I used to experience. Right back, I might as well have been 20, 30, 40 years ago. I might as well have gone back because here I am in it again. Am I any different today than I was yesterday? If I haven't learned how to depend, to depend upon God, I think the same way, I feel the same way, and I behave the same way as the same circumstance came upon me 20 years ago. But if I've learned to depend upon God, I don't think the same way. I don't feel the same way. I don't behave the same way. Food tastes better. My wife looks prettier. And if you can believe this, you folks even look nicer. I mean, it's a miracle. It's a miracle. Why? Because I've learned to depend upon God. Can you say amen? amen. Hallelujah. Now I want to begin to wrap this up. Turn to Psalms chapter 35. Psalms chapter 35. Hallelujah. Psalms chapter 35. Verse 27 and 28. And I want to expound on this for the next few minutes. Hallelujah. Psalms 35 beginning with verse 27. Let them shout for joy. Let them shout for joy and be glad that favor my righteous cause. Yea, let them say continually, let the Lord be magnified, which have pleasure in the prosperity of his servant. And my tongue shall speak of thy righteousness and of thy praise all the day long. Now I want to look back here at verse 27 and how awesome this is. You see, let the Lord be magnified. The Lord which hath pleasure. Now the Lord takes pleasure in the prosperity of his servant. Now, let me ask us this question. What's the difference between prosperity and success? You see, you're not going to find, you're not going to find success in the Bible. Because success is an earthly condition. You don't need God to be successful. You don't need Him. Many people, lots of people in the world, highly successful, hate God. Even God haters. Hate America, hate you, hate me, even hate themselves. And they're highly successful. Wealthy, rich, well-to-do, famous, popular, whatever the case might be. You see, success isn't in the Word of God because in the Word of God, in the Kingdom of God, it deals with pleasures. You see, success is more about achievement. Success for me is helping you achieve success. That's my success. Success for me is helping a young man become successful, a young girl, a young athlete become better than what he ever thought he could become. That for me is being successful. But you see, Prosperity is more about a relationship. Yeah. You see, success is achievement. Prosperity is something in the kingdom of God. Prosperity. Don't, don't think for a second that prosperity is having more than you ever need. Prosperity is having you're, that you're financially wealthy or you're, you have properties wealthy, that you, know, that you have many things. And that's your modern preacher today. Your modern preacher today would try to convince us that if you really have enough faith in God, you can be super successful on earth. You can have a lot of houses you don't have to pay for. You can have four or five convertible, you know, convertible Mustangs that you can own. You know, and God will just give you, if, if, if you just have enough faith in God. 
And that's being successful. You don't need God to be successful. But you see, folks, prosperity is a kingdom of God thing. It's more about a relationship. Now let's look at this as I get ready to wind it down. Let's look at verse 27 again. The Lord be magnified, which have pleasure in the prosperity of His servant. Of His servant. You see, the Lord takes pleasure in the relationship that my servant prospers in our relationship. The servant is glad and takes joy in serving his master. The servant takes joy in preparing the food, in putting the things together, in drawing the bath water. You know what I'm saying? In, in taking charge, in telling who can come in and see the king, who can't come in and see the king. And the servant takes, takes a lot of joy in serving his master. And because of that, the servant prospers in that relationship. And so there is an abundance within that relationship that the servant enjoys. And you see, the servant is full of joy because of that relationship. Folks, I want the joy of the Lord to increase in me. I want God to take pleasure in the prosperity of this servant. Not that I have more money or more things, but that my relationship with Him prospers. When I go to church, it prospers. When I'm alone, I'm prospering. When I'm with somebody else, I'm prospering. When I'm in sickness, I have joy and gladness. When I feel weak and down, I can call upon Him because His Word inspires me. You know why? Because I've learned to depend upon my Lord. And His servant prospers. And the Lord, the Lord takes joyous in the prosperity of his servant. And oh God, do I as your servant want to prosper more? I want to increase in wisdom. I want to increase in understanding. I want to increase in knowledge. I want to increase in love. I want to increase in joy. I want to increase in peace. I want to increase in contentment. I want to be more content. I want to increase in your power. I want to increase in your mercy. I want to increase in your strength, oh God. Prosper your servant that you might be joyous over your servant. Hallelujah. Let's read it again. The Lord be magnified, which hath pleasure in the prosperity of his servant. Folks, the question today then bids us, are you prospering as a servant in your relationship with your Lord? This is not about money. This is not about land. This is not about toys and cars and things. Not that they're bad and wrong. Have them. God bless you. Have more of them. I wish I could have more of them. <laughs> you know, that's not, that's not the issue. That's just a given. You pay attention. You young people, you young kids, you do the things you're supposed to do. You get an education. You mind your own business. You don't get into trouble. You listen to wide words, wise words of understanding and discernment and you learn. You can be super, super successful. Hallelujah. I have a master's degree in education. Our son has just two years of college. He's a thousand times more prosperous than his mom and dad. Doesn't have anything to do with that. He got in trouble. Our son got in trouble in junior high. And the teacher, he got in trouble with the teacher because he was too gregarious. He, he, he talked too much in class. He, he was too friendly with people in class. And so he got in trouble all the time with the teacher because he just socialized too much in class. Well, I'm here to tell you that socializing skill has made our son a multimillionaire. That the teacher in seventh and eighth grade criticized him for a habit. That's how stupid they are. It's unbelievable. It's just unbelievable. You see, let's wrap it up now. Let's wrap this up. You see, folks, prosperity. It's all about a relationship with His servant. It's about who we are. It's not all, it's not about what we can do, but it's about who we are. You see, it's about the character of a person, the content of a person's character. It's about the content of my character. It's about the content of your character. That brings pleasure to the Lord. It's not what we can do or what we can accomplish. 
It's the content of our character that brings pleasure to the Lord. Say amen. amen. Now I want to close with this. I just can't stand it when I hear. And I haven't heard for a long, long time. So there's nobody here listening to me. Unless you're listening to me. I mean, uh, Bill and Virginia, if you're listening to this, you might be guilty of the thing I'm going to say right now. So shame on you. But anyway. I just can't stand it when I hear Christian people say, I think God understands that I'm just doing the best I can. Now, Bill, have you been saying that? Knock it off. Virginia, slap it. I think God understands that I'm just doing the best I can. Now, folks, let me tell you something. That applies to a first grader taking a math class. Well, now, honey, now, now, what's your daughter's name again? My, I have to keep asking because I, I got a lot of things going on in my head. My little sweetie, honey, now you just, I can't do it. Yes, you can. Now just, just do the best you can. You see, that's what we say. And you just, you, you, you just do the best you can, sweetie. You'll be okay. In fact, if the teacher's not looking, I'll help you with number one. It's actually three. Yeah, three. 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 Oh. And just do the best you can. See, that's what you tell first graders taking a math class. You see, folks, there's nowhere, there's nowhere in the Word of God that gives permission for us to just do the best we can. In fact, the Word of God refers to the best we can as A-L-L. All. Love me with all. Not the best you can. Forgive with all grace and mercy. Trust me, not the best that you can, but with all your heart, your soul, and your might. Yeah. There's no, there's no, I'm just, I think God understands that I'm doing, trying to do the best I can. There's no best I can. Now there might be a best I can for person or someone who struggles to have inspiration around them. Don't misunderstand me. I'm not being insensitive by any means. I'm speaking to the majority of people who are seasoned Christians. Mm -hmm. God's not interested in my the best I can. I might do the best I can today when I exercise, but when it comes to obeying the word of God, he expects all of my effort. He expects all that I have. Amen. And he takes pleasure when his children don't do the best they can, but when they do all that God has asked them to do. Can you say amen? amen. I said it. Amen. I said the Lord takes pleasure when his servant doesn't do the best that they can, but when his servant does all that the master has asked them to do and the master will never ask his child or his servant to do anything that they can't do without the master's help. That's right. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Did you hear it? Amen. Close with this. Through it all. I've learned to trust in Jesus. Yes. Through it all, I've learned to depend upon His Word. And now when those circumstances come upon me, now when those thoughts of malcontent come into my brain, forced upon me by the enemy, now I know some of you are legitimately crazy. You're, some of you are. And you need to increase the pink pill. But for the majority of the time, it's the enemy that tries to rob and steal from us. Amen? Amen? It's the enemy that tries to come and kill our joy and your peace and your contention. It's the enemy that puts pressure upon you. I can feel it at times. Folks, I can absolutely feel it at times. And there's times when I say to my wife, you know, in different circumstances, and I'll say to her, you know what, this is just wrong. I can feel it. I can just feel it. I can feel it. It's not right. 
It's not, it's not right. I'm, 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 I, feel, I feel a weakness, and that's not right. Okay? It's not supposed to be like that right now. It's not that I forgot to take the pink pill. It's the forces of darkness that's coming upon me to try to rob and steal so that I won't be a blessing to you. So that I won't be a blessing to the things of the kingdom of God. Whatsoever I bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatsoever I loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. And the enemy doesn't want me to promote that. Because you see, when we speak and pray those words, we enter into the spiritual dimension of the heavenlies. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And God, God takes pleasure in the prosperity of his servant when they've learned to depend upon him. And they go anyway. They don't do the best that they can. They do all that has been asked. Wow. Heavenly Father.